gonna do this. We gonna do this. Most beginners throw their discs off to the left. Or up in the air and then off to the left. Come on. Yeah. Understanding how discs fly can make disc golf a lot easier and more fun. Oh, no. It's like that. Let's look at the different types of golf discs, how they fly, where to use certain discs, and how the weight and the wind will affect their flight. After all that, you should be able to select the right disc for the shot you'd like to throw. To keep this as short as possible, we'll assume you are throwing with your right hand using a backhand shot. If you throw with your left hand or use a forehand shot, just reverse everything you see here. There are different types of discs for different types of shots. You might want to start out using only one or two user-friendly discs until you get the general idea. Then you can begin throwing some of the higher speed discs with a little bit of knowledge. Some of these high-speed discs are much harder to throw, and they can be very discouraging, if that's what you're using to learn with. A typical disc golf starter set might consist of three discs, a driver, a mid-range, and a putter. Golf discs have a beveled edge that generally defines what the disc is best used for. The sharp-edged discs will cut through the wind faster and go farther. These are called drivers, just like traditional golf. Mid-range discs have a more blunted edge than the drivers. They won't fly as far, but they tend to fly straighter than most drivers. Putters have the widest and roundest edge. They are generally used for close-up shots. They won't go anywhere near as far as drivers, but they do tend to fly straight, even when they are not thrown hard. Now let's use a backhand throw to illustrate a typical disc flight. We'll start with a driver. Notice how the disc starts out straight, then turns to the left as it begins to slow down at the end of its flight. For a beginner, most drivers will generally have more early left-hand turn than a mid-range or a putter, especially if they're not thrown very hard. A mid-range disc will also turn left as it slows down, but it should hold a straight line longer. It won't go as far as a driver, but will generally fly straight over the early part of its flight. A putter will fly even straighter, but it may still fade left at the end of its flight. The word stable is used to describe a disc that is designed to fly straight. Some discs are designed to be overstable. An overstable disc will fade off to the left fairly quickly, unless they are thrown hard. There are certain discs that are understable, that means they're designed to turn over to the right instead of the left during the early part of their flight. In some cases, understable discs will still fade off to the left at the end of their flight. You can use an understable disc when you want to turn your disc over to the right using a backhand throw. There are speed and stability charts on the web that describe all of the flight characteristics of every single disc known to man. The discs are arranged on horizontal and vertical axes to indicate how each disc will fly at a specific speed. The left-right axis represents the stability of each disc. For example, discs on the left side of the chart are considered overstable. For a beginner, this means that they will typically fade hard to the left early in their flight unless they are thrown with a lot of power or speed. The stable discs in the center of the chart should fly more or less straight. They will still fade a little bit at the end, but should maintain a straighter line over most of their flight. The understable discs on the far right side of the chart are designed to turn over to the right if you throw them hard enough. The other important part of these charts is indicated by the vertical axis. At the bottom of the chart are the slowest speed discs. Slow speed discs require much less power to throw them the way they are designed to fly. The high speed discs at the top of the chart will go much faster and much farther, and everyone wants that, right? The only problem is that high speed discs require a lot of power or speed to throw them straight. For example, if you only have enough power to throw 200 feet, which may be pretty far for a beginner, 
Any attempt to throw a high-speed disc from the top of the chart will probably fade early and hard to the left. Until you can throw around 300 feet or more, you should stick to the discs in the lower section of the chart. Lower speed, stable discs are much easier to throw straight and will keep you out of trouble. Some disc selection charts include a four number series that provides more details on high speed stability and early and late fade of the disc to help you match your power level to your specific needs. You can study these charts to learn more about any disc you select, but the important thing for beginners is to stay within your power or speed range and choose the disc stability that allows you to control the disc the way you want. The flight of any disc will be greatly affected by how hard or how fast you throw the disc. If an overstable disc is thrown really hard, it won't start fading off to the left for considerably longer than if it was thrown with less power or spin. As you develop more speed, you can throw overstable discs straighter. For example, when you throw this overstable disc with a medium amount of speed, it will fade to the left fairly quickly. But if you throw that same overstable disc with a lot of power, notice how it goes straight for quite a ways before it starts to fade off to the left. When you do start to gain more speed, you can eventually overpower certain discs and make them turn over to the right instead of to the left. Beginners should start out with lower speed, stable, or understable flying discs until they develop enough power to turn these discs over to the right. At that point, you may want to upgrade to slightly more stable, higher speed discs. The lower speed discs that you learned on will still come in handy for specific shots that you have already mastered. Disc weight will also have an effect on how a particular disc will fly. For example, if you throw the same style of disc that weighs 10 or even 20 grams less, you'll notice that it probably won't fade quite as quickly as the heavier version of that same disc. There are lightweight models of most discs. If you find a disc that you like, but want one that has a little less early fade, you can choose a lighter version of that same disc to compensate for your power level. As you develop more power, you may need to change discs to compensate. When you start to overpower your favorite disc and turn it over to the right, you could use a heavier version of the same disc to keep it from turning over quite as easily. Or you can choose a different disc that is slightly more stable so you don't turn it over to the right as easily. Throwing downhill will cause a disc to fly faster. Once again, whenever a disc is thrown with more speed or power, it will act differently. The additional wind speed will counteract the natural left hand fade of the disc and cause it to fly straight for longer. A downhill throw could also turn over completely if the increased downhill speed overcomes the stability of that particular disc. That's why you might want to use a slightly more stable disc when you throw downhill. Wind direction will also affect how a disc will fly. When you throw directly into the wind, your disc will think it's flying faster because of the additional wind hitting its face. Depending on how much headwind there is, your disc might even turn over completely. Whenever you throw into a headwind, you should choose a disc that is more stable so that it doesn't turn over to the right. An understable disc thrown directly into the wind will likely turn over and dive right into the ground. You might think that a wind at your back would increase the distance of the flight. That's pretty much the opposite of what happens. Wind at your back tends to blow the disc down to the ground. To compensate for a tailwind, you may want to aim slightly higher, but watch out that the disc doesn't get too high up in the air, where it can get blown away by the wind. Lightweight discs will be affected more by the wind than heavier versions of the same disc. In windless situations, you could aim to the right with a stable or overstable disc and know that it will eventually fade back to the left and end up somewhere near the target. But on some shots, you may not have enough room to start out wide to the right and fade back to the left. 
In that case, you might choose a disc that is understable, so it turns over to the right during the early part of its flight before it fades back toward the target. You can see why disc selection is the most important choice you make for each throw. Choosing the right disc is the key to staying in bounds and out of trouble. Ideally, there is a perfect disc for each shot to compensate for your disc speed and wind direction. If you are frustrated because your disc always fades off to the left, try an understable disc or a lower speed disc and throw that new disc until you learn how it behaves and then move up to a faster disc that will fly farther when you develop more power. Now let's add one last detail to consider, which is the angle that you release the disc. Releasing the disc on a flat angle is generally a good place to start. But sometimes you might want to make a slight angle adjustment to reduce your disc's tendency to veer off to the left or perhaps to compensate for the wind. If every disc you throw tends to fade off to the left, a slight upward increase in your release angle will help the disc turn over to the right before it eventually fades back to the left at the end of its flight. The overall effect of an Anheuser release angle should average out to be a straighter and longer throw. Now let's say you're throwing directly into a headwind. Remember how the additional wind on the face of the disc can make it turn over to the right more than normal. You can compensate for this by releasing the disc on a slight downward or hyzer angle. If you release the disc on a downward or hyzer angle, the headwind should turn the disc up a little and flatten it out. If you throw that same disc into the same headwind, but release it at an anhyzer or slightly upward angle, the disc will probably turn all the way over to the right. When there is no wind to consider, if your typical throw fades off to the left and you're stuck with using that disc, you can compensate a bit by releasing the disc at a slightly upward or anhyzer angle. The more anhyzer angle you put on the disc, the longer the disc should fly straight before it starts turning back to the left. Understanding how discs fly may seem complicated, but it really isn't. Although it does take experience to learn the mechanics of the backhand and forehand throws, and just as important, the flight characteristics of specific discs. You can get by with less than perfect mechanics, but trying to make a disc do what it isn't designed to do is like trying to fly using an egg beater and a feather duster. Hey, good luck with that. Ouch. Disc selection is critical, especially for beginners. More advanced players can generally compensate for any disc in any situation and figure out some way to make a decent shot. But as a beginner, it's much easier if you use a disc that is appropriate to the speed you throw and the shot that's required. Now you know how discs fly. So get out there and throw some. Because now that you understand the basics, you're going to avoid frustration and play more better. And that is exactly what the Guardians recommend.